SpaceX has announced that the Starship may finally have its orbital launch test in April after several delays. The Starship is expected to play a massive part in the Artemis missions, but first, the vehicle must become space-worthy. In today's video, we'll be looking at the Starship and how it may have its first orbital launch in April. Will the Starship be ready in time, or will it be plagued by further delay? Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. With the development of the Starship, SpaceX has opened a new world of possibilities for space travel. With its powerful engines, efficient fuel system, and revolutionary landing system, the Starship is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. Whether it's a mission to the moon, Mars, or beyond, Starship is ready to take us there. The Starship could launch on its first ever orbital test flight a little over a month from now if all goes according to plan. SpaceX is now tentatively eyeing mid to late April for that epic mission, which will lift off from the company's Starbase facility in South Texas. Starship consists of a giant first-stage booster called Super Heavy and a 165-foot-tall upper-stage spacecraft known as Starship. Both stainless steel vehicles are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable, and both are powered by SpaceX's next-gen Raptor engine, 33 for Super Heavy and 6 for Starship. Starship has flown before, but only on short hops that reached a maximum of six miles or so above Earth, and those vehicles were upper-stage prototypes sporting three or fewer Raptors. No Super Heavy variant has ever left the ground. That will change on the coming orbital try, which SpaceX has been working toward for a long time now. The most recent Starship test flight occurred nearly two years ago, in May 2021. The tentative target data shifted to the right repeatedly during this stretch, which isn't surprising given that Starship is an entirely new vehicle, and one that's very different from SpaceX's currently operational rockets, the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Both Falcons, for example, employ Merlin engines rather than Raptors. Musk said recently that Starship has about a 50% chance of success on its debut orbital flight whenever that liftoff occurs. But he also stressed that SpaceX is assembling multiple Starship vehicles at Starbase at the moment, and one of them is bound to succeed. SpaceX has also been making regular improvements to the design of the Starship, with the biggest one being an overhaul of the craft's boosters. Once optimized, SpaceX says that Starship can launch up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines, has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expanding its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, impressively low but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches. And there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they're recovered. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable, whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. Musk likely means that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom-built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship, with no heat shield or fins or legs for expendable interplanetary launches. Further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and Ship 27 feature no thermal protection, have no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. 
More likely than not, they will be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the Moon revolves around a depot ship variant that will store propellants in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship Moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. In early 2023, SpaceX revealed that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to launch up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons to LEO and cost $1 to $2 billion per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms that the company is considering all of the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs about 420 tons. Two expendable Starships could launch more usable mass to LEO, truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make Starship launches frequent and routine. The Starship has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism. And with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. Space tourism offers many benefits, both for the individual traveler and for society as a whole. For the individual, it offers the chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime adventure and the opportunity to see our planet from a completely new perspective. For society, it provides a new source of revenue and jobs and helps to advance the field of space exploration. While space tourism is expected to be a big part of the Starship's future, the craft is needed for several groundbreaking scientific missions. After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis I mission and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis I mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the Moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. The spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it'll also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then to do the crewed landing in late 2024. While delays are possible due to the Starship being a brand new concept, all signs point towards the craft being ready in time. Starship is the centerpiece of Musk's eventual plans to head to Mars. Although SpaceX makes its money from launch services, the company is also focused on developing technology for future space exploration. In 2011, Elon Musk told delegates at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in San Diego that he planned to take people to Mars in 10 to 15 years. Three years later, at the International Space Development Conference, he said the reusable rocket stage would be a step in getting to the Red Planet. In 2016, Musk unveiled his technological plan for Martian transport, which is a part of his plan to create a self-sustaining red planet colony in the next 50 to 100 years. 
The Starship has been plagued by several production delays in the past which have hindered the company from perfecting its final design. To remedy these production issues, SpaceX is planning a new $7 billion factory to help the company stick to its deadlines. The facility is called Starbase, and Elon Musk aims to build it into a space-focused community. It is located in Boca Chica, Texas, which is several miles east of Brownsville, near the sea. The community is near the SpaceX South Texas launch site, and the company has its sights set on significantly growing its presence there. If SpaceX were to move in, take over, and rename the town, it could turn Boca Chica into the 21st century's Cape Canaveral. There are several reasons why this location was chosen. One is the road sizes in the area. SpaceX designed the Falcon 9 from the ground up so that it is transportable by U.S. interstates. The Falcon 9 diameter is 12 feet because U.S. freeway lanes are 12 feet wide. SpaceX develops all its rocket parts at Hawthorne, California, including the rocket engines. After testing all rocket parts, SpaceX transports all the Falcon 9 parts such as payload fairings, first stage, enter stage, and booster stage to launch facilities separately. When all the rocket parts come to a launch facility, SpaceX assembles the Falcon 9 for launch. Unlike Falcon 9, the Starship is 30 feet in diameter, so there is no way SpaceX can transport this rocket from their Hawthorne, California factory to a launch facility. Musk knew he had to build their Starship at the launch facility. SpaceX does not own any of the three launch facilities. It currently has lease agreements and pays millions of dollars monthly to the U.S. government. Musk knew that if SpaceX owned a launch site, it would save them a lot of money. That's why they started to look for a location for a rocket manufacturing and launch facility. According to Elon Musk, occasional flights from land are okay, but frequent flights must be from the ocean and at least 18 miles away from shore, primarily because of the noise. Therefore, a launch facility must be near shorelines and must have roads. The launch site also needs to be near the rocket factory. Otherwise, transporting the rockets would be a massive cost burden. Also, the East Coast is best for a rocket launch into most orbits. It's because if a rocket launches into the East, it can take advantage of the Earth's rotation and save energy. Moreover, the FAA will never allow launching a rocket over land in the U.S., unlike in China or Russia. So, SpaceX will never be able to launch except for polar and sun-synchronous orbit from California. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about how SpaceX has stimulated the 5,000-ton Starship ahead of its final pre-launch testing. Do you think SpaceX can get humans to Mars by the end of this decade? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.